Big John. Big Jesse Ventura is our guest. Uh, Governor, one more time for people tuning in, getting this exclusive first look uh, at the TV show that, believe me, is going to be powerful, folks. Tell them uh, when the seven episodes are going to air, how they tune in, how they watch it. Well, it'll be on the True Network, which used to be Court Television. It's located, if you got the satellite, I think it's right in between TBS and TNT. It's the station in between if you're on the if you're on the direct dish satellite or whatever it is, uh, but you know check the wherever. And anyway, the first show will air Wednesday, December second, and it'll be ten o'clock Eastern, nine o'clock Central, and it's a one-hour show. We're doing seven conspiracies, and naturally, I'd like to say this: Can we get completely into the conspiracies and everything about them? Absolutely not. You can never do that in an hour. So we focus on just certain portions of the conspiracy, which I think people will find it, especially your, your listening audience, Alex, are going to find it very interesting. And so it's going to be airing every, every Wednesday uh, in December and January, or are they going to skip one on Christmas? I have no idea. I'll, well, they be gone, I'll be gone surfing at that time, and I'll leave all of you up here to take the repercussions from it. <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do if I come parachuting in when you're out there surfing? <laughs> well, and I'll know everything hit the fan up here because I know that if you're not doing your daily radio show, then uh, the United States don't exist anymore. <laughs> now, is my bunker ready next to your bungalow? <laughs> I don't know. You know, uh, I'll tell you that Bob, my, my neighbor Fernando, he had to dig a 40-foot well down there, and it took him six months, but it would have taken him a year had there been good waves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to come back and take phone calls, but right now let's get into the global warming episode. Okay. I mean, I mean just give us a little taste of that. Well, the big thing on global warming to me is this cap-and-trade legislation. Uh, it's nothing but bait-and-switch. It, it, it's a legislation that's designed to make money, not to solve the problem. And if, if global warming is indeed a problem, then why is the solution simply money-making that, that does nothing to address the actual problem? And that's the key of what we try to expose, and this is the cap-and-trade legislation for what it is, and the fact that there are 30,000 people with PhDs and science degrees that simply are not buying into global warming, and it doesn't seem to be that they get any type of... Uh, their opinion is not being aired at all. Well, and that's again, right. It's a very one-sided opinion. Well, yeah, when Al Gore says, all scientists agree it's man-made, and then you find out that actually the majority say it's driven by the sun and by nuclei from space causing cloud condensation. I mean, I'm not going to give away who you interview in the film, but this is going to be a powerful death blow uh, one more nail in the coffin against the uh, greenies that want to tax us. I mean, it's come out that Al Gore has made over a billion bucks so far off this. I mean, he owns a cap-and-trade company that you've got to buy carbon credits from. I mean, how obvious is this? Well, again, it, it comes down to the legislature. Whether I'm not, I'm not a scientist, Alex, so I'm not going to beat my head against the wall on whether it's real or not. But a good way to look at things is, Always view something not from what someone says, but from what someone does. And the cap-and-trade legislation is fraudulent because you can have a company that's, that's supposedly polluting. They don't have to change at all. They can simply pay money and buy other people's and trade so that until they get under, and they'll still pollute the same, but then they'll be able to say that they're not. Well, that right away is fraudulent, and if that's fraudulent, then what else is fraudulent? I tell you, that's a key point. Take the weakest part of their argument, break their neck right there. That's why we love you, Governor. Stay with us. All right, in this five minutes, we're going to get into Secret Societies, Manchurian Candidate, and Big Brother. The, the three episodes we haven't given you a little uh, teaser on premieres December 2nd, True TV. Tell everybody about it, folks, because I think this is going to be the not just Ferris, but leaning towards our view of any television show ever on mainstream TV. I think this is a bellwether because the establishment's beginning to realize that they become obsolete by never discussing this information. So television's losing ratings and the Internet's exploding. Governor Jesse Ventura, uh, 
getting into Manchurian Candidate, Secret Society's Big Brother. What do you want to talk about first? Well, I guess let's go Manchurian Candidate. Uh, uh, that, that, this one is going to be a very, this one is a very terrifying show. Uh, we all know that MK Ultra was real. The documents state so, so there's no gray area there that the government was in the business back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s of attempting to control people's minds and, and attempting to manipulate them and to use them to their advantage both militarily and whatever. Well, all indications are that those programs have been re-ramped up again and they're back on a high level again. And uh, that being said, that's what the Manchurian candidate deals with, of course, and that we've all heard the story. Uh, one of the interesting things I'll say is that the guy who shot John Lennon fits it perfectly, Mark David Chapman, because contrary to popular belief, Chapman was no Beatles fanatic. If you go back in his history, in fact, his favorite artist was Todd Rundgren, who's hardly a Beatle. And uh, when he shot Lennon, he, could, he had three ways to escape immediately. Central Park, down into the subways, and then just get lost with everybody. Instead, he stepped back in the shadows and started reading the book The Catcher in the Rye. Which is a classic mind control. When they torture them under the drugs in, in one of the systems, they then become obsessed with the trigger word. When McVeigh got pulled over, he said, get the chip out of me, and was foaming at the mouth. And then the most famous mind control scientist ever, Jolly and West, was his doctor with him every day until the day he was executed. And I'll tell you this, Governor, studying the Fort Hood shooting, I can't say it was a mind control, but it has every earmark. He's a psychiatrist. The well, FBI and I'll CIA you, it's were... funny you should say that, Alex, because amazingly, when, I, when it first happened, scarily, that's the first thing that popped into my head. Unbelievable that you say that because that's the exact first thing that popped into my head when I when I first heard about the Fort Hood shootings and when I started then reading about the whole situation, how the guy never had it in his background. And then now the CIA and FBI are watching him and he has this fake history that suddenly began and then commanders and people said bust him and they wouldn't do it. Same thing with 9-11. Then he's a psychiatrist. He has that whole history and once you study mind control he just fits every piece fits and i wouldn't say this last week i mean i knew that was going on thursday but now more and more of the pieces are coming out and man the hair on the back of my neck just stands up <laughs> anyway enough manchurian what are the last two shows okay we got to go to break we're going to come back and uh, briefly get into uh, uh into secret societies uh and, and big brother watching Big Brother. So we'll talk about that. But, uh, Governor, in the 45 seconds we've got, tell us about your uh, book, Don't Start the Revolution Without Me. What, what about it? Well, no, just how folks can get it. It's, it, it's been a bestseller. Oh, I don't know. It's still in the bookstores, and I guess you can get it over the internet. <laughs> I've, I've been so involved in this thing, I haven't even thought about the book for months. Well, I just wanted to plug your book because it's a good book. Oh, well, thank you. And, and it's still out there. I was actually in the Minneapolis airport the other day, and I saw copies there for sale. So uh, it's a book that I, uh, it, it's got a lot of my heart and soul in it. I wrote it, uh, you know, on my trips to Mexico and all that. And it includes my wife, and it tells you about my years in office, and it'll give you a great insight into how I think. Absolutely. Okay, the two final episodes briefly, and your phone calls for Governor Jesse Ventura giving us the exclusive. We'll be right back. Have you ever wanted to generate your own supply of electrical power? 